Hey, Shalom Israel, Shalom. Hey, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, Rakak Wadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutations to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, and the 130 of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land where we go. Shalom, brothers and sisters, Shalom. So, uh, this epistle here is entitled, uh, You know, um, You Reap What You Sow, something like that. Uh, and I woke up, you know, it was on my spirit, you know, through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Hashem Hashem, so we're going to bring it out. Now, later on this morning, you know, came straight to the plantation and uh, saw this, I saw this video here uh, by the brother. Let me, let me bring it up real quick. Uh, here it is. Is this the one? Yeah, this is the one. What name do white people call on, whether it be on the street uh, in movies, music, what name do white people call this, on? Do they call uh, on Yahweh? This is a Bible, Bible, biblical defenders. You know the brother from Baltimore, the elder from Baltimore, right? And uh, you know, <laughs> he man, the brother be he be bringing it out, bro. So anyway, this this Christian bug out. You know, uh, after I saw this, I, I was like, man, I, I wanna, I would like to do a response to that to that uh, to that video. So Lord willing. Uh, I'll be able to do that, you know, do a response to that because that guy's gone, man, you know, and it's, uh, hey, but, but once again, coming back to this, to this epistle that the Lord, you know, given us this morning to do, uh, you know, you reap what you sow. Once again, warning the children of Israel, you know, uh, and as we're going to bring out in this, in this epistle here, you know, Yahweh Shemashai has made it known to us, you know, starting with the elders, apostle, great millstone and all the other brothers on the umbrella, you know, uh, surely, you know, Amos chapter three, verse seven, surely Yahweh Hashem Hashem will do nothing until he reveal his secrets unto his servants and prophets. And the spirit of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy, bro. And it's all, man, it's all just laid out so beautifully for those with eyes to see and ears to hear. And most, and also, you know, the, 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 the understanding, the, the gospel, which is the good news is look at this, bro. I'm here at, at the plantation and look, Yahbashim Ashab. Hey, he said he made the world for our sakes, bro. Okay? Right now, this is Esau's kingdom. Yeah, they're in rulership right now. But Yahbashim Ashab, he said he made the world for our sakes, bro. Okay? So we're going to get into this epistle. I'll be fly, you know, flashing back, back and forth to these beautiful views as we go throughout the epistle. Um, and we're going to go. We got, we're doing this through, uh, via the screen recorder. So uh, let's get into it, okay? We're just going to go straight to the scriptures. Um, going to the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7. Hold on one second. Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. Yahweh Hashem is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Right. Once again, Yahweh Hashem has made his words known to us, bro, in these last days. I'm talking, and we're we talking when we're speaking. We're speaking to the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians with this good news, telling you that you're the Lord's chosen people, man. It's, it says so in the scriptures that the Lord chose Israel. You know that we're His holy people, His holy nation above all these other nations. All these words that Yahweh Hashem has proclaimed to us, and He's you know made it known, and we're bringing it out to you. He said, "Go out on the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled, my man." You know, and once again, we understand this is a thing of predestination. You know, Yahweh Hashem Hashem say, you know, no man come to me unless the Father draw him. So we're calling out to the 144 hopeful elect and one third of Israel, the ones that are going to be able to hear these words, believe them, and receive them. And ultimately, you know, we're about to get it now. Repent and be healed. You know before this great and terrible day of the return of the Lord, before this time of Jacob's trouble, where all hell is about to break loose in this wicked-ass world, you know? And all of it is of Yahweh Hashem It's a great judgment that's about to happen. We're talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. We're talking about famine of food. We're talking about concentration camps. We're talking about the hour of temptation, the M-A-R-K, when they're going to tell you, you, know, you won't be able to go inside the grocery store and buy what you want no more unless you bow down to the image of the beast and take that M-A-R-K. You know, what the Lord told us not to do. He said, anybody that do that, they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. You about, we're about to go through some shit, brothers and sisters. So listen, right now, right now, this is the time to make no terror to turn to Yahweh Hashem This is the time to repent with your whole heart. This is the time to believe in this word of truth. This is the time to be plugged in to the 100% truth, watching the videos of the elders, apostle, great millstone, and all the other brothers on the umbrella. Be not deceived. Yahweh Hashem is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, 
Check it out. Listen. He that soared to his flesh, right? Because the Lord told us to stack up our riches in heaven. The Lord told us to, hey, put on as the elect. The Lord told us to press toward the mark, bro. He that soared to his flesh, of the flesh, reap corruption. But he that soared to the spirit, shall the spirit reap everlasting life. You, did you hear that last part? Did you hear? Hey, bro. Did you hear that? Did you hear that last part? They're going to reap everlasting life, bro. Everlasting life, right? Because we're talking about the kingdom of heaven, you know, about to be established. An everlasting kingdom, okay? All this stuff that we see here is temporal as it speaks about in the scriptures, okay? Now let's go get that. Let's go get that thing, what we're supposed to be doing right now. Um, going to the book of Acts. Chapter 2, verse 38. You know, just being so simple with it, man. And that's why I want to make that epistle about that uh, that uh, that damn so-called Christian that's coming against the word of Yahweh Shemashah. Shah. Then Peter said unto them, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh Shah." Right? He's he's trying to debate the name of the Lord. So you know we understand that the rest were blinded. We understand that the election have obtained it, but the rest were blinded. You know, just it's just a talking point for us, right, at this time, to call in the believers. To you know. To call in the ones that's, that you know that's looking around, that's looking for the truth, right? And we're showing it, we're showing you the truth through the word of Yahweh Shemasha with the correct understanding through the Spirit and the power of Yahweh Shemasha. Then Peter said unto them, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh Sha, you know, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the what? The Holy Spirit, my man. Repent." In the name of Yahweh Shai, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive, the spirit of discernment, the spirit of understanding, my bro. You, you know, without the Holy Spirit, your ass is done, okay? The elders, I was watching a video about the, uh, the, from the elders, you know, earlier, earlier this morning, they were speaking about that. Without the Holy Spirit, your ass is done, okay? The spiritual power right here. All praise to Yahweh Shai. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted. Why? That your sins may be blotted out, right? When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, right? You want your sins to be blotted out. Why? Why is that? Why you want your sins to be blotted out? You know, because it's wicked as well, telling you that the law's done away with. You know, but that's not true. Yahweh Shemashah, He said, "I didn't, I didn't come to do away with the law or the prophets. I came to fulfill the things that were written of Him. You know, that He said He's going to come and die for the children of Israel to cover their sins. You know." This is the book of Amos. Verse, we're going to go straight to the point. Amos chapter 9 verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. And that's what this epistle is going into. You know, you, you're going to you reap what you sow. You want, that's what you want to say. That's what you want to believe. These lies of the world with the Lord telling you not to love the world, right? He tell you don't be a part of the world, right? Come here. Where's the thing at? He's telling you not to be a part of this world. And right now, he's got his, his men on the highways and hedges proclaiming his word of truth in the last days, letting you know without a shadow of a doubt, you know, that we're the children of Israel. The spirit bears witness that we're the Lord's chosen people, you know, in this wicked-ass world, this wicked, perverted-ass world, bro. Well, they come against the word of Yahweh Shemashah. Everything the Lord stands for, everything the Lord has told us to do, they say do the opposite thing, you know. Serpent in the in the, uh, in the uh, serpent in the garden, right? Serpent in the garden. That's who they are, bro. Come on, let's go. So we're gonna we we we're, you know coming back to you. How about Shemasha and spirit and the truth? You know, fearing the Lord and being obedient to His word. This is the book of um, Second Ezra, chapter seven, verse twenty-one. For you, how about Shemasha has given straight commandments to such as come. What they shall do to live, right? Even as they came, and what they should do, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Isn't that, doesn't that sound reasonable? Doesn't that sound simple and plain, straight to the point? What does it say? For Yahweh Shemasha has given straight commandments to such as came, right? We just, I just read you one. Repent it. Repent, therefore. And be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Repent and believe in this gospel. Believe in Yahweh Shemashah. Believe the report, right? You know? Receive, re repent for the remissions of sin, and you will receive the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. For Yahweh Shemashah has given straight commandments to such as come. What did he say? Love not the world, 
don't you know don't be a part of this world uh, come out from among them you know uh, can two walk together unless they be agreed all these things Yahweh Shem HaShah has commanded us to do in these last days for Yahweh Shem HaShah has given straight commandments to such as come what they should do to live even as they came and what they should observe to avoid punishment what does it say nevertheless they were not obedient unto him but spoke against him and imagined vain things bro and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the most high that he is not and knew not his ways right even though standing right in front of you bro telling you no the lord said this no the lord said that the lord said this let's go to the book of romans chapter 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of Yahweh Shem HaShai is eternal life through Yahweh Shai or Lord right so the wages of sin is death if you're not covered by the blood you know the Lord tells us hey come back you know he, he understands that we're in these in, in these sinful bodies we understand he understands we're not justified by the law but he said uh, let's go get it in the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus real quick so we're not using our own words. Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 verse 24. But unto them that repent, he granted them return and comforted those that failed in patience. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity. For he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and hate that abomination vehemently. All right, man. You know? He said he's going to lead you out of darkness into the light of hell and hate that abomination vehemently, you know? Um, I'm going to go get this on my phone here. Let y'all look at that for a little bit. Let's go to the book of Psalms. 118. Psalms 118. Verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Okay? It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Okay? So, you know, um, hey, once again, bro. Turn it down. And I want to go to the book of Jeremiah too. So it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man, right? We're gonna go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 Thus said the Lord Yahweh Shemashah Cursed be the man that trusts in man And maketh flesh his arm And whose heart departed from the Lord Yahweh Shemashah See right now once again y'all we ain't, ain't nobody got no cloak for their sins Because at this time You know uh through the mouth of the prophets, you know, starting with the elders, apostle, great millstone, and all the brothers on the umbrella, Yahweh Shemashah has made it clear who the man of sin is. Esau, Edom, the Caucasian race. You know, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. You can look at his actions. You can look at his past history and know that this man is the devil that the Bible speaks of. Right. So Yahweh Shemashah is saying, "Hey, don't trust in this man." Uh, just like the scripture speaks about trusting in science, falsely so called. You know, in the book of Second Timothy, thus said the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusts in man and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from Yahweh Shemashah. Because this is the time. What does Scripture tell us in the book of uh, in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah, chapter ten, verse twenty, right? And it shall come to pass in the day that the remnant of it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. Right. We're not trusting in, in man no more. We're not trusting in Esau, Edom anymore, our oppressor, our, our slave master. You know, now the Lord has let us know who this man really is. He told us in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, that you're going to be carried away into Egypt again with ships and sold to your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you. You know, like I said, the story is laid out so beautifully, brothers and sisters. Yahweh Shemashah made these words known to us, you know, of what's going on. 
Once again, Yahweh Shemashah said he's going to do nothing until he reveal, reveal his secrets unto his servants and prophets. So now we're waking up in the last days and knowing all these things. It says, and it shall come to pass in, the, in that day that the remnant of Israel and such are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon them that smoke them, but shall stay upon the Lord Yahweh Shemashah, the Holy One of Israel in truth. You know, we're not going to stay upon these devils no more. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. Okay, and we we're not talking about the whole house of Israel right now. We're talking about the small a small number, you know, of, of the children of Israel, right? In the book of uh, going to the book of Ecclesiasticus again, uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus, chapter twelve, verse ten. Since we're on the subject, just tells you never trust thine enemies. Okay, never trust thine enemies. For like iron rusts, so is his wickedness. Right? And you got, uh, oh shit, I, I read the wrong thing. You got the children of Israel out here uh, defending this devil. You know, trying to, <laughs> that's why, that's one reason why I want to do an epistle about that, a response to that, to that Christian. Because just like the brothers always say, man, they always ask about Esau. They never say anything about the other nations. Never, boy. It's all about Esau, you know. That's that Munchausen syndrome, you know? I think that's, is that, I'm saying it wrong. and I'm, I know I'm saying it wrong. I'm going to stop saying it. I'm going to figure out what, you know, uh, what's that syndrome where um, where you, no, this is the wrong thing. What's that syndrome where you uh, you sympathize with your with your captor? Shit, I gotta, let's look it up, man. Let me look it up real quick. Uh, Y'all look at this view real quick. I'm going to look that, that, look that up, make sure I got it, got it correctly. Google, I'm going to Google it real quick. Syndrome, what's it called? Oh, it's called Stock, Stockholm Syndrome. Okay. I was calling it Munchhouse. Oh man, I was way off. Salaki brothers and sisters. It's called Stockholm syndrome. It's the it's coping mechanism. Let's it's a coping mechanism to a captive or abusive situations. People develop oh, shit, damn, I'm all over the place. It says uh, Stockholm syndrome. Y'all can't y'all can see it anyway. Stockholm syndrome is a coping mechanism to a captive or abusive situations. People develop positive feelings toward their captors or abusers over time. You hear this, bro? This condition applies to situations including child abuse, coach, athlete abuse, relationship abuse, and sexual trafficking. Hey, wait a minute. What about slavery? They, 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 they left that out of there, motherfucking devils. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Yeah. So let's read that again. Stockholm Syndrome is coping mechanism to a captive or abusive situations. People develop positive feelings toward their captives, captors or abusers over time. This condition applies to situations including child abuse, coach athlete abuse, relationship abuse, or sexual trafficking. Right. And what, what do what did Yahweh Shah say? He said, let's go get it. I'm going to go get it right here. It is a righteous thing. To recompense tribulations to them. You know, tribulations to them that trouble you. That's in the book of Second Thessalonians, chapter one, verse six. Sin it is a righteous thing with Yahweh Shemashai, with God, to re recompense that pay back tribulations to them that trouble you. Right. Because the Lord also said, you know, um, he that lead into captivity shall go into captivity, right? Uh Let's go. Let's go get some more scriptures. We're going to go ahead and, you know, bring it out, bro. Uh, going, going to the book of first, was it second Corinthians? Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, right? These people are the damn devil that the Bible speaks of. Um... 
Hold on. That's not what I was looking for. But that's a good scripture. Hold on. Yeah, once it, let's read this. For such are false apostles, deceiving, uh, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into to the apostles of Yahweh Shai. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Right? I want to get that scripture where it speaks about uh, you may as well put up with it. You know, if anybody comes preaching another another Yahweh Shai. Okay. Okay, it's, the, it's over here in, in verse, it's just right down here in verse 4. For if he that cometh preaching another Yahweh Shai, bro, and that's what's been happening the whole time they had, they got all these damn different denominations of Christian Christianity champ, churches in, in, the, in our neighborhoods, you know, shoving it down your throat. They got the, the, they got the Catholics, they got the, the damn Methodists, they got the Lutheran, they got the Jehovah's Witness, they got the Seven Day Adventists. They got all flavors for y'all for y'all ass out there to, to, to trip your ass up, to keep you away from the one true living God. You know, the, the God of the Bible, the God of the Israelites that's written up in the scriptures. The word, you know, they want to give you, they want to twist the words around and give you a false doctrine. For if he that cometh preaching another Yahweh Shai, whom we have not preached, bro, you know, this is the old path, walk ye in it. This is the way, walk ye in it. You know, the spirit of prophecy. When the Lord talked about he's going to come back and destroy this wicked as kingdom. Right? And he's going to put all rulership under his foot. Okay? You know, and he's, the children of Israel are going to be joint heirs with him in the kingdom of heaven. That's what the scripture actually say, my man. You know? So if, if somebody come preaching another, something different from that, and you believe it, or if you receive another spirit, right? That, that spirit of J.C., who talking about he love everybody? That's another spirit because that's that's not what the word of Yahweh Shem Hashem say. The Lord said, I hated Esau. You know? Yeah, it says so. I hated Esau and laid his mountains and heritage to waste. We're gonna go get it in a minute. You know? That's in the book of Malachi. And also in the book of Romans, where it says, you know, this is this is prophecy being fulfilled. The Lord created these people to be the wicked, bro. We don't want to get too oh look, oh look, the elder apostles are. Come on, let's wrap it up, man. Which ye have not received, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye may well bear with it, right? Hey, check it out. Ye may, ye might well bear with it, right? Because what? Going right, right back to the, to the title of this epistle. You know, you sow what you reap. You want to listen to some bullshit out here? You want to continue on, you know, trimming your ways to seek love? When this truth is out telling you, that you so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians are the Lord's chosen people. But no, no. You gotta you wanna go along and get along. But we're telling you that the kingdom of heaven is about to be established. Telling you that this is the end of their age. Telling you, you know, man, it's so beautiful that this truth is is, you know, the words are faithful and true. And we believe it, man. That's why we're making ourselves a living sacrifice. Well, why we go out there on the highways and hedges to proclaim this word of truth to you, being commanded of Yahweh Shemashah, which is our reasonable service. We're just unprofitable servants, bro. You know? Come on, let's go get some. Let's go get some more scriptures. Close it out. Um, uh, going to the book of Jeremiah, chapter six, verse ten. Jeremiah chapter six, verse ten. To whom shall I speak and give warning? That they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it, man. You know? Yeah, you got some knuckleheads out here. You know, of course, Scripture tells us that the election have obtained it, and the rest are blinded. You know, uh, we understand that, bro. And that's the way it is. That's the condition of the battle. You know, good is set against evil, life against death. So is the sinner against the godly, and the godly against the sinner, bro. Um, but this word is for the 144 hopefully like the 130 vigil once again you know this is the book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 10 which say to the seers see not and to the prophets prophesy not unto us right things speak unto us smooth things prophesy deceit get ye out of the way turn aside out of the path cause the holy one of Israel to cease from before us okay all right and you, you want to hear this false doctrine this uh, false Christianity doctrine you know 
uh, as, and it's so much evidence out here. They gave you the damn slave Bible, asshole. You know what I'm saying? These people are not your friends. They come over like the, like the, uh, like the brothers was bringing out in an epistle I watched the other day. They come over here in the name of, I think it might, it might, it might have been the brother from Baltimore, if I, if I can't remember correctly. You know, they come over here in the name of Christianity, but yet they kill, you know, all the, all the, you know, all the Native American Indians, you know. But what about, you know, the, the, uh, you know, what about the seven day jubilee, you know, or forgiveness and all that stuff. You know, they all that stuff, they they all the all the laws and statutes, commandments of Yahweh Shemashi, they cast them behind their back. But it's still talking about in God we trust. It's all bullshit, bro. But now the truth is being being declared, my man. Okay, look, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? These scriptures are here. Yahweh Shemashi knows your heart. He knows who you are. He's telling you that you're in a corruptible flesh. You know, he's telling you, don't even believe your own damn mind. Trust in him. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're going to next in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in his words. Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding, man. Don't even think. Don't even, you know. You know, don't even think. Don't even think. You don't even have to think. Just trust and believe in the word of Yahweh Shemashah. Do not believe in your own self. You know, just be doers of the word and not hearers only. That's what the Lord telling you. To walk in the spirit, my man. Walk in the spirit. Turn away from this wicked ass world. Repent with your whole heart. You know, see things for what they really are. Stop living in la la land. What does the scripture tell us to do? Awake, awake. You know, it's high time that you awake out of sleep, right? All these things. Why? Because the time is at hand. Great judgment is about to befall this place. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 5. For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Or who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside and ask how doest thou? These people give a damn about your ass. They try to they about to try to make you a perpetual slave by by implementing that uh, this dig digital currency, you know, to control your ass, to control your every movement, right? And the Lord has made these things known to us. They're trying to get you to take that MARK, so you know you'll be cut off from your house by Shemasha forever, bro. So you'll be destroyed, you know. And this word of truth is out here. Yahweh by Shemasha is warning us. It says, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Okay? These are the words of the Lord. Plain and simple. No lies, no guile. Not for filthy lucre. Not for vain glory. You know, just, just being obedient servants of the Lord. You know, um, telling you what the Lord has pro proclaimed to us. And also seeking out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Getting the blood off our own hands, bro. Turn you at my reproof. Repent. Be corrected. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. You know? But ye have set at not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. You didn't, you didn't come watch the videos of the elders apostle Great Millstone with the 100% truth. You know? But you're going to reap what you sow. That's why this epistle is called reap what you sow. You know, you're going to reap, you're either going to reap to the spirit, to everlasting life, or you're going to reap, you know, to the flesh of corruption. You know, being part of this wicked ass world that tells you to obey thy thirst, you know, to tell you to do as thou wilt, you know, to tell you to, to be okay with all these abominations that be done in the midst thereof. But we are crying and sighing for all the abominations doing in the midst thereof. You understand? So you're going to sow what you weep. You're either with Yahweh Hashem Hashem or you're against the Lord. That you can't, there's no two ways about it. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when the stress and anguish come upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Yahweh Shemashah, they would none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them but whoso hearken unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil brothers and sisters ain't that beautiful you know yeah and it's simple it's simple my man you know the lord once again the lord has got his words out here on full display that you have no cloak for your sins Let's go into the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 18.
This, I want to start at 19. Yet say ye, why doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father, when the Son have done that which is lawful and right, and have kept all my statutes, and have done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sinneth, Okay, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Right, just like uh, the book of Revelation chapter 22, verse 11. He that is holy, let him be holy still, bro. No, but if, that wick if the wicked will turn from all his sins, and he that he had committed, and keep my statutes, and do... That which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. And we know we just read Ecclesiasticus chapter 17, verse 20, 24, when the Lord said, you know, uh, you're going to, uh, you know, come back, return to him, offend less, you know, offend less, you know. Don't be bound up with all your iniquities, which is sin upon sin upon sin, because you never took the time to come to Yahweh Shemashah. But you're going to reap what you sow. You're either going to repent to the one true living God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, or you're going to continue being a part of this wicked ass world under the rulership of the devil. He saw eating the Caucasian race, you know, and being an antichrist. Okay? It says, they shall not be mentioned. Oh, oh Sulak, so so let me start back. 1822, all his transgressions that he have committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he have done, he shall live. Okay? Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked shall die, should die? Said the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, and not that he should return from his ways and live. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committed iniquity, and doth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, right? If you want to, exactly. The Lord told us to be holy, be separate, you know? He's, he's given us, like uh, we just read earlier, he's given them straight commandments what they should do to avoid punishment, bro. But look, uh, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, he shall live? What? What kind of? That don't make no sense. And all his righteousness that he have done shall not be mentioned. And his trespass that he have trespassed and his sin that he have sinned, in them shall he die. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? Right. That's what we want to bring out that point. You reap what you sow. When a righteous man turneth from his trans from his righteousness and committed iniquity, which is sin upon sin upon sin. Now, see, because the scripture speaks about a just man falls down seven times, but he gets back up. You gotta we're gonna make mistakes. We're not perfect. But what what we we we, we, we fear you how about Shai, we trust and believe in the Lord, you know, and we understand we're not justified by the law. But we understand we're justified by faith. And if you have the faith of Yahweh Shema Shai, you're going you're gonna to do things that are well pleasing to him, okay? So when a righteous man turneth, from his, turneth away from his righteousness and committed iniquity, which is sin upon sin upon sin, you didn't, you didn't get back up. You wanted to lay, stay in the mud and dieth in them for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die? Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall, he shall save his soul alive, okay? Because he what? He considered, brothers and sisters. You reap what you sow. He considered and turneth away from all his transgressions that he have committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet, saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal and are not your ways unequal? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, Everyone according to his way, said the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Doesn't that sound, doesn't that sound right, bro? You know, and that's all that's going on right here. You know, Yahweh Shemashah is preparing us, he's, he's, you know, that's why in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, it starts off by saying, let not truth and mercy you know, uh, it, it says, son, my son, forget not my law, you know, and it says, let not truth and mercy forsake thee. This is the truth and the mercy that the Lord has given us, you know, um, as we read earlier, I keep quoting it, you know, Yahweh Shemashah has given them straight commandments, what they should do to avoid punishment, bro. 
you know, straight commandments, what they should do to avoid punishment. And then he said, look, a city is set up on the hill with all good things. This is Israel's portion. You know, the earth is, you know, created for our sakes, my man. What are you, what are you doing, bro? You know, he says, wait ye upon me till I rise up to the prey. You know, just uh, for this time, you make yourself a living sacrifice, understanding who you are, understanding where you are. Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. You know, understanding that you're in the hands of your enemies. But this is the story. It's the condition of the battle. The Lord is going to come and rescue us from these fucking devils. You know what I'm saying, bro? Come on, man. Come on, man. Okay. Uh, let's go to Galatians chapter 6 again one more time. Oops, that's the wrong one. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. Yahweh is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life, man. That's right, man. Okay? Now, we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5. Whoops, shit. The wrong one. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay? Walk in the spirit, bro. Think always, you know, Lord willing, you know, have your mind, your conversations in the heaven, your conduct, the way you act, the way you think, you know, you know, always being mindful, you know, understand when you got some wicked thoughts coming to your mind. Um, because, you know, you first, you, before you do a sinful act, you get the thought to do the sinful act. So you got to snap that shit in the bud, bro, to the best of your ability. There ain't nobody perfect, but hey. This is a condition. This is the fight, man. Good is set against evil. Life against death. So it's the sinner against the godly and the godly is against the sinner. That's why the Yahweh Shema Shah said, choose ye life, bro. You know? For the flesh lust is after, lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. You would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Right? Because you, if you're led by the spirit... You know, you're gonna you're reaping what you sow. You're, you're reaping to the spirit. You know, you're like uh, you're constantly repenting to your Habashim Hashem because you you know you're in a corruptible flesh. You know, like I say, uh, like the scripture speaks about. Uh, you know, you're 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 made for vanity. You're made uh, for van you know the creature was subject to vanity, uh, and that's just it. You know, your Habashim Hashem is God of war. You fight. <laughs> It's not easy, bro. Come on. Come on. But, you know, once again, let not mercy and truth forsake thee, brothers and sisters. You know, just pray to the Lord and, and do to the best of your abilities. You know, and but most of all, just having faith in Yahweh Shema and you're going to do, you're going to do the things as well pleasing to Yahweh Shema by just believing and keeping yourself away from this wicked ass world. Look, here's a boat right here. There you go. There you go. That's some eye candy right there. A little bit of movement out there. Okay. I want to get this uh, while we're looking at that. Going to the book of Proverbs. Well, he's gone now. Come on, let's go. Let's go back. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law... Happy as he, right? We understand what is going on. We understand there's a reason for doing this. You know, there's reward for, for doing this, you know? And it feels good. We understand good and evil. And the scripture tells us to shun evil. You know, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to shun evil is understanding, you know? We understand that this earth is given into the hand of the wicked. They're, the, they're, they're against Yahweh Hashem and they, pro they promote that, you know? And we don't want no part of that. The scripture tells us to hate that abomination vehemently, brothers and sisters. You know, and it's all about believing and knowing, you know, and having that eye self to see it, that this is not the end all be all. So where there's no vision, the people perish. But if you have the vision of, of, of the kingdom of kingdom to come, you know, Yahweh Shemasha said the kingdom was, is in you, right? Because you read, you, you believe the report. You know, you understand these words. Yahweh Shemasha is in us, you know, this righteousness. This belief, this hope, this, you know, understanding the laws and the, 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 and the laws are good, bro. 
This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is, that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? Right, where there's no vision, the people perish. But we have a vision of the future, a vision of the kingdom of heaven. It's like uh, somebody coming back in a time machine and telling you, hey, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Well, that's what do you think was going on right here. Look, this is the book of uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right, the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, the lost trail child of Israel. But the day of the Lord, Yahweh Shemashi, will come as a thief in the night, and in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Everything that you see here is temporal, bro. Seeing then, seeing then, bro, that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, man? What are you supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be waiting on your how about my shot, doing what the Lord has commanded you to do, which is repent with your whole heart, turn away from this wicked-ass world, understand the truth, being plugged into the 100% truth, you know, ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Start calling on the names. Start praying to those names. Get your shit, get your mind right. Understanding what's, what's about to happen. Looking for and hastening into the coming of the day when the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth where dwelleth righteousness, man. That's the vision, okay? That's the vision. What does the scripture say? You know, where there is no vision, the people perish. But if you have the vision of the kingdom of heaven, you know, and, and being joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, our enemy Esau, Edom, the Caucasian race with all their damn wickedness being put into captivity, that's, hey, that's something to look forward to, ain't it? This is the book of John chapter 20, verse 29. Then Yahweh Shai said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed, brothers and sisters. Right. Bless the ones that believe the report. They have not seen how do all the miracles, you know, heal the sick, the blind and dead, you know. And we're coming out, waking up, understanding that we've been lied to. They've given us a false god and a false idol, so-called named JC. We know that these damn devils have the curse of Cain on them. You know what I'm saying? And it's a beautiful thing. Blessed is him that, that still believe these words of truth, you know. But, you know, we're waking up in, 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 in this time period here, being discontinued from our heritage. And but the Lord has put the spirit on some of us to go out and proclaim this word of truth. And that's why the scripture said through the foolishness of preaching, it's, it pleased him to save them that believe, brothers and sisters. This is something else. OK. To be reborn, brothers and sisters, to forget all the shit, all the lies that you you've learned in this world and, and, and learn it a brand new. It's beautiful, bro, to be reborn, to have the spirit of the sermon, the spirit of understanding. Just want to give all honors and praises to you. How about you? My Shabbat, man. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, Yahweh Shem which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Right, and the Egyptians, the modern-day Egyptians is Esau, Eden, the Caucasian race. We're here in Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, bro. We're about to close it out, man. This is the book of Second Thess, chapter 1, verse 7. And to, who, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord, Yahweh Shai, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh Shai, Shai, because you reap what you sow. You didn't want to come and get to know the Yahweh Shai, Shai, you so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians. You don't want to believe the report. You know, you, you got that Stockholm Syndrome. You know, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh Shemashai and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shai. Okay? Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? Man, that's what we're talking about. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all of them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. That's what we're talking about over here, bro. 100% truth. All praises to you. How about Um Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 2. 
And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he that run may read it. He that run, that he may run that readeth it, right? The vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Right, man. We're talking about the, the downfall of Esau Edom's kingdom, you know, the destruction of this wicked ass world, and the kingdom of heaven being established. But the Lord said, hey, man, when y'all start talking about this stuff, you know, this motherfucker's gonna get pissed off, you know, and it wasn't, what does the scripture say? This is the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him, right? We just read earlier that we're no, no longer going to stay up on Esau, Edom, the Caucasian race. But we're going to stay up on Yahweh Bashim Hashai. In truth, right? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. You know, because Yahweh Bashim Hashai shed his blood for the children of Israel to cover us by the blood of the Lamb. And send back down that Holy Spirit upon us. So we can understand and believe. He's gonna, he said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit that's going to teach you all things. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Right? We now we understand that we're yet this day in our captivity. You know, they they tell you this falsehood, this witchcraft about the some bullshit American dream, but at the same time, you're oppressed and you're their slaves. They want you to become a perpetual slave by trying to get your ass to take that M A R K. You know what I'm saying? And y'all motherfuckers eating it up. But we understand that two thirds of the children of Israel must be cut off and die. That these devils are just the sword of the Lord. Right? And once again, coming back, coming back now. So when we start prophesying these things, you know, Yahweh Shem Hashai, you know, it's the end of this man's kingdom. He's gonna try to, he's gonna try to, you know, speed up, you know, try to get it, get it together. But the Lord said He's not gonna let him perform his enterprise, you know. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Right. They're going to try to implement that, that agenda that he got cooked up here. But that's all prophecy. You know, that's all supposed to be happening. So the Lord can deliver us out of their hands and the kingdom of heaven can be established. We're going to the, show it right here. I'm going to wrap it up. This is the last scripture we're going to bring out in the book of Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 14. You know, it's plain. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord. That it shall no more be said. That it shall no more be said that the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But that the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, which is Babylon the Great, a.k.a. North America. And from all the lands whether he have driven them. Because the children of Israel are scattered among all people around all nations. And I will bring them again unto their land that I gave unto their fathers. And he's speaking about the elect. The 144 hopeful elect and one-third of Israel. And, uh, let's see. Let's, let's, back, let's back that up with the scripture. And we'll just close it out on this scripture right here. Um, in the book of Matthew. Chapter 24, verse 31. Let's start at uh, 24. I, I mean, let's start at 30. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Right? Because the Lord said, my determination is to gather the nations. He's about to judge them. He's about to... Tear him up, bro. He's gonna put all rulership under his foot. It's gonna be a great war, bro. All the all the tribes of the earth shall mourn all these other nations. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Right, with the with the uh, angels, you know, with those chariots and so-called UFOs. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. From the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other, right? That's right before that nuclear destruction that's going to shoot over here and blow up and destroy Babylon the Great, you know? And that's the vision. And that's what we're waiting on. That's what we pray for, you know? Speaking of which, i got to send up those curses on Babylon the Great, like we spoke about yesterday. So, hopefully this was exhorting, you know, and edifying, brothers and sisters, because you reap what you sow, you know? So with that, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakah Quidash. 
I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutations to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. And the one-third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land where we go. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom.